Hey, welcome. We're going to start celebrating our new inductees to the Illinois Disc Golf Hall of Fame. The Illinois Disc Golf Hall of Fame was established in 2019 to recognize key individuals who made an impact on the sport of disc golf in Illinois. Each member has to uh, have a favorable standing and an honorable reputation within the, within the disc golf community. They need to have made significant contributions to the sport of disc golf through development, promotion, leadership, and our sportsmanship that merit our recognition and respect. Having have dedicated at least 10 years of service to the disc golf community in Illinois, and have given back to the sport with a passion that transcends personal gain. We put the bios and photos of the members of the Hall of Fame on IllinoisDiscGolf.com. The present and past state coordinators, along with the members of the Illinois Hall of Fame, choose each year's class. The bar is high to be nominated and even higher to be elected into the Hall of Fame. If there's someone that you would like to have considered for a future class, uh, please send me an email with a short bio so the committee can consider them. This year, we're inducting two individuals, Steve Maddell, number eight, and Tom McManus, number 1276. We've asked a couple individuals to introduce this year's class. And introducing Steve Maddell, I'm going to pass the microphone over to Gary Lewis. I'm honored. Uh, I met Steve Maddell in uh, 1980 at West Park. Uh, when the course first opened up, it was like magical as Disneyland for Frisbee players. Uh, we competed, traveled to tournaments, uh, we went to world championships together, we designed and worked on courses. Um, Steve was an engineer, he was a practical and logical kind of guy, he was real strict, he kind of explains his personality a little bit, um, he was unusual. The only thing is except his driving, he was the most outrageous driver I ever rode with. <laughs> His aunt tells me he's interested in uh, astronomy and health. I guess he's getting a lot of magazines at home. And uh, I don't know, I think he must have missed a chapter on, a, on seeing a doctor before you're 68 years old. He thought he was indestructible. Uh, Steve liked the bike. Uh, I went on a bike and canoe trip to him with him to uh, Ludington, Michigan. We also uh, disc golfed in a Ludington sand dune course up there. The guard locked us in. We couldn't get out. <laughs> Um, I had some calls from friends of his. These were serious biking friends. John Snyder, some of you remember him, pro player, Tim Boyce. They often bike with Steve. This was the typical trip that he would take them on. They go, they're heading up to the Rock River, Dixon area, complete with maps of all the highlights and all the monuments that are there. They w left at 3.30 in the morning. They walked eight miles. Then they biked 60. And that was the typical trip, and all the way through trip, all the way through, he's pointing out the monuments to everybody. Guy was something. Supposedly, he was playing on the beaches of Chicago, but I don't know about that. What I do know is that he was a freestyle player in the early '70s and maybe late '60s, and an all-around player, guts player. He and Roy both joined the IFA in 1972. That's Roy Carey. They played guts at the World Championships in Marquette, Michigan. Uh, Steve also played in the Rose Bowl, 1976 Rose Bowl. His signature is on the 76 poster, and along with the IFA book, is at Tom Worley's Ashley Whippet Frisbee Dog Museum in Naperville. I've seen it. Um, at the Rose Bowl, they decided to start the PDJ. Steve was there. That's how he got number eight. Huh? Uh, he had 10 bucks. <laughs> 15, I heard. Anyway, whatever. Uh, he played, uh, Steve played in 15 world championships over four decades. I think he played more than anybody in Illinois. Bob Ryan has 10. Phil and I got eight. He ran a series of events, Midwest uh, events. It's called Midwest Championships, 83, 84, complete with giving out a green jacket. Um, Steve ran leagues for 35 years, more than anybody. He started the Joliet League in 1987 till 1994. He moved it to Lombard, later moved it to Hinsdale. Um, he was strict running his league. You know, don't even think about coming late if you want to get into his league. I mean, he'd throw a fit, and, uh, especially at Hinsdale. Hinsdale was like a dog park, too, you know, so... He had this ongoing battle with this guy at Hinsdale moving this table. I heard about this over and over. You know, this guy would move the table into the fairway, 
and he'd move it out. The guy finally told Steve one day, he said, you're a sick person, you need help. He played in his own league on October 23rd, 2021. It's the last time he played. He didn't show for October 30th. Uh, he called into work with a headache, and he was found dead on November 2nd. Um, he called me on October 13th, and he wanted to meet with me, and he didn't sound right. He was rambling, confused. I asked him if he was drunk, thought and knew better. Thought maybe he played disc golf all day with Bob Walsh and Al Hemersill. Uh, so we met at 20. We met on October 23rd, and I wasn't going to stay the Naperville course, um, I, but I did walk the course with this group because the course was so beautiful. I mean, Naperville looked like a ball golf course the way they were doing it there. New baskets, new trees, green grass, fairways clean, extra tees, extra baskets. That's their fairways. Baskets, rock piles with baskets on top of it, mounds. Um, he didn't play real great that day. Um, he kind of seemed like he was throwing worm burners and missing some short putt. Um, anyways, his, but his legacy, his legacy is going to be... Uh, the iconic courses that he designed, he had an amazing run. He, he and we had an amazing run for about 15 years, starting about 2000. Uh, starting, we started getting interest in courses in the 90s. Prior to that, not much. So we it started off, we got, two, we got Shorewood back in after being out for seven years in 2000. Shortly after that, we got Trinity, Naperville, and a few other courses in. But our really big break came with Mokina. We got Jerry Exkoff, he was a different kind of director. This guy had 39 acres of uh, oaks in Mokina, and he really wanted to do a good job, and he did. And uh, we formed a five-man design team right off the bat, and Steve and Roy took the lead because they were, uh, they were the, not working. They actually worked at this course six, and a half, six days a week for one and a half years as volunteers. And we had volunteers, we had probably close to 20, 30 volunteers working. So about the time we got done with that, though, we got the word we could put in Highland. But uh, we, we'd have to fund the whole thing, which we did. And to date, I think, with all the different clubs in Joliet, oh, I forgot something. Um, we probably got over 20 grand. It's a player course. We got over 20 grand in that course. So, um, and he also worked a year and a half to build, to build Highland. And we got the whole four. I'm just going to tell you a couple little things. Hole four, Steve says, we need a bulldozer. There was no fairway there. Steve and Roy, John Knudsen, and several other volunteers became the bulldozer. They cleared a football field of brush as big as a house. Steve liked doing grunt work, let me tell you. And the craziest thing he did, I'm glad I wasn't there. Hole 15, we had a big branch in the way. And he and Jim Clope, fashioned the rope with a swing on it. They tied it to Steve's bumper, and he slowly pulled Jim up into the trees, I'm saying maybe 40 feet, to cut the limb. Thus the hole's called Clope's Cliff. After, after that, uh, after that, we, this, these courses almost in consecutive went in, and Steve designed all these. West Chicago, Oak Brook, Hinsdale, he helped with Delwood and Naperville. Um, when he designed, he, he designed with incredible detail. He used these little triangles to determine how big a fairway had to be. Uh, his maps had to be to scale. Um, and that's how he determined to make it safe. He tried to balance his right left. I was going to bring the, one of the sheets that he used, ups and downs. I mean, he was, I know he was up at night working on the details of these courses. He was an engineer and did it right. Um, so anyway, uh, Steve, thanks for all the great courses. Uh, we're going to memorialize Steve by putting his, whole, his name back on the hole at Shannon that originally had his name. And they were hole 15, Mantles Mound, and hole 17, um, 008. And he already has his name on uh, Highland Park number 9, Mantles Monster. And he was a monster, so thanks very much. And his aunt, his aunt Maddle, Sissy's going to receive the award.
Uh-uh. I... <laughs> I'm so honored to be here. I wish Steve was here. This is this is such a great honor. Uh, thank you for inviting me, and uh, in in hearing all those um, uh, stories. Uh, now I know why his car was always uh, in bad repair if he was using it to to pull. If he was using it to pull um, <laughs> uh, trunks of trees or whatever, but uh, uh, th thank you. Uh, this is this is great. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. I do want to recognize the uh, the members of the Hall of Fame that are here today. Gary Lewis is one of them, Paul McAllister, Wilbur Wallace, and Jeffy Sains. Brian, you're here. Brian Cummings. <laughs> All right. Our next, in, our next uh, inductee is Tom McManus. And for his introduction, we actually have disc golf guy Terry Miller sent us with this video. Hello everyone, I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, and it's my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce Tom McManus, PDJ1276, into the Illinois Disc Golf Hall of Fame. Like so many of you, I've known Tom now for decades. He's been always a staple at tournaments, in fact, a lot of tournaments. Just since 2005, since getting back into organized competitive disc golf. We've seen him compete in nearly 500 tournaments in which he's won more than 100 of them. In fact, close to 25% of those 500. He's played in any division. It doesn't matter. He wants to go where either the most fun is or the most competition. He's truly your definition of an Iron Man. Someone that would play practice rounds on Friday, play two rounds on Saturday, and then go find either another division or another tournament and then compete on Sunday as well. What's maybe more impressive about this Iron Man who's gone out and played so many competitive tournaments in such a short span, broken records with the PDGA, held world distance records and done so much with the PDGA, anytime he's not playing, he's also helping promote and further the game. He's doing that with course design or assistance with courses, He's also doing that from a club perspective. And you know that every tournament you've ever gone to, there's Tom McManus right there in his sweatshirt and his jeans. And he's not afraid to uh, push those sleeves up and get dirty. He's willing, whether that is to shovel a tee pad, whether that's to rake leaves or, or blow leaves off of a fairway, or that's to count up the scorecards and reorganize the board. It doesn't matter. Tom will do that all. Well, again, some of you are new here. So yes, we used to count scorecards and do arithmetic and then Tom was right there. And then he would be the first to lean over your shoulder and say, what the hell is that number? What did they write here? Does this check out? Always right there ready to help. Now, some of you understandably may say that that, that older guy that seems gruff, that's yelling, that seems unapproachable. Well, yeah, he can be those things too but all you have to do is peel back one tiny layer and you're gonna find caring, compassionate, kind, and an individual that cares so much about the success of a tournament and the success of the players and the experience. And he's been all about that really from day one. He's helped me out countless tournaments where he just shows up even if I don't ask for it and he's the first guy, like I said, to push up his sleeves and then get in there and do some work for you. He wants things to run smoothly. He wants everybody to enjoy their time. This dates all the way back to the late 70s when he was introduced into Frisbee sports and then signed up for the PDGA in 1984, has been a pioneer of the game. And even though he wasn't part of that competitive scene for more than 20 years, he took early titles in the 80s back there in Libertyville and in Adler Park and, and you know that entire Northern Illinois area. But to see him jump in in 2005 to get serious to then play hundreds of courses with all of these tournaments 
should be nothing short of inspiring for all of you. And this is all when Tom wasn't exactly just uh, taking it easy with his feet up at a desk job for many years. Recently retired, so now we're still seeing him out there on the course fighting through, being able to play during the pandemic. It's been incredible, and I really can't say it enough, truly inspiring. Enjoyed some times with Tom, even at, we'll say, a Green Bay Packer game. Enjoys going up to Lambeau, enjoys taking in the atmosphere in both Wisconsin and Illinois. I know that might, that might have been what held him out of the Illinois Hall of Fame for a couple of extra years, but to know the asset that Tom McManus has been to the entire Frisbee and disc golf community in both Wisconsin and Illinois, and truly, literally any state that he goes to has been incredible. So if you ever see the time when Tom McManus pulls out a couple Frisbees that are probably from the 70s or the 80s or, or the 60s or whenever it might be, and he asks you to play some catch, play a game that he's made up, or just simply toss some Frisbees around, you better take the opportunity because you're not gonna find a more solid individual, a more gracious, kind soul that likes to hide it than Tom McManus. So Tom, congratulations to you. Congratulations to Steve and his family as he's being inducted this year. Steve was also an incredible soul, and I'm so honored that I got the chance to know him uh, when he was with us. So I can't say it enough. Congratulations, and congratulations to the Hall of Fame for taking in and accepting and welcoming and inducting these two incredible humans into your Hall of Fame. Very well deserved. Tom McManus, PDJ 1276. I love you, buddy. Congratulations. Pretty much every time I run an event, Tom comes off the course, Mike, what can I do? It doesn't matter how hard or messy or what it is, he gets it done. So, Tom, congratulations. Frisbee from about 1965 Talk to the mic. and I'm going to try and uh, keep it together. So uh, it's such a huge honor to be a part of the amazing group of people who have brought so much joy to so many. To be considered part of this group is amazing. First off, I want to thank my... First, I want to thank my wife, Pam, who without her, I wouldn't be involved in the disc golf community to the extent that I am. Uh, disc golf and frisbee in general have provided me with thousands of hours of fun and friendship. Uh, Frisbees and golf disc has given me the opportunity to make so many great friends and meet so many wonderful people. Uh, so many people have opened their homes for me and let me sleep on a couch, in a bed, or on the floor. Uh, Brian Cummings in 1983, he didn't have a clue who I was, and let me stay in his house and play some events down in Indiana. Um, John Rush, in Iowa, I went out and played an Ironman event out there. He had no, who, no clue who I was, let me stay over. Um, Jay Joseph has been especially kind to let me stay with him up in my treks to Wisconsin. Uh, Tate Handy in Michigan, Brett Commonsoli's parents, uh, Joe and Joan, Dan Nickler's parents and Dixon, and so many others have been just so generous to me. Uh, Guys like Roman Coral, James Wilbeck, Matt Parker, Steve Held, Taylor Samala, Brett Comensoli, Dan Mickler, and Dave Nelson uh, were always willing to throw with me. Even though uh, much older than them, and they always made me feel welcome, for which I am forever grateful. Uh, special thanks to Miles Parkhill as he. Uh, allowed me the opportunity to play in the USDGC when he had a, uh, the opportunity to do so. Um, Terry Miller, Brian Cummings, Gary Lewis, Gary Lewis Jesse Sains, uh, Mike Krupika, Duster Hoffman, Brad Went, Barrett White, Nate Heinhold, Tom Wincy, and the Breakles are just a few of the people who I admired who I admire and tried to give a little bit back to the sport where they have all done so much. I'd also like to thank uh, Charlie Burke, Joe Essman, and Mike Hughes. I met Charlie through collecting Frisbees, 
met Joe at Charlie's 60th birthday party, and through Joe became involved in a flying disc museum. And if you haven't seen the museum, you should check it out. It's, uh, it's really amazing. Um, the Flying Disc Museum, which Mike Hughes and a small group of collectors created the museum to celebrate and learn about flying disc history. With the help of many locals, I've tried to include an extensive history of Illinois and Wisconsin disc sports in the museum. All in all, this sport has given me so much, and uh, I've hoped that I've been able to give back a small portion in return. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. We're going to do one more uh, uh, memory of Steve Maddell. I'm going to have Brian Cummings come up here. Hello. Uh, lost a lot of good friends in this sport in the last couple of years, and Steve was one of them. I just got to tell you that everything in this sport is doing great, and we have a lot of people doing a lot of things, and I'm very proud of when I come out here to Joliet, I'm just amazed at everybody out here. So, great job. We do have Paul McAllister here and Gary. And in the beginning, there was nothing. And guys like Steve set standards for things that we needed. And Paul was another one, and Gary, that how do we do a tournament? How do we do this? Steve started the first real series that I remember in 84. Uh, and, you know, it was with Peoria here and a couple other places. And he started, you know, the disc golf thing, you know, the di digest. And he ran a great league with gigantic uh, prizes, uh, like big cups for the league that he did. He kind of set set the bar for really cool stuff of how he, things happen in the sport. So I can't say enough about the guy. And then Tom is just one of the best. I mean, uh, it's just, it, it's an honor to be here and see these people and, uh, Chuck Kennedy's here from the International Hall of Fame, and he's also here. So, uh, just uh, it's been a pleasure to be part of this thing. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. All right, congratulations again to the 2022 inaugural class of the Illinois Disc Golf Hall of Fame. We have a limited number of discs for sale. If you want to commemorate this year's class, uh, please see me afterwards if you'd like to purchase one. Thank you all for coming out.